What do we mean by performance? Well, typically we find people can keep maybe three or four, five things in their mind at one time in terms of criteria. If you go out to buy a car, think about what's important to you. You really probably don't ever look at the tread on the tires. That's really not an issue for you. You may never even look at whose tires they are. You probably are concerned with fuel efficiency, the uh, styling, the uh, uh, safety features of the car maybe, and the last one might be the radio or something else, or does it have an onboard nav system, whatever. But there's only so many things you're going to keep in mind. The rest of them are sort of threshold values. You just want it good enough, like everything else, in the range, and so you can sort of set those aside. When we're looking at performance in terms of technology, what we're trying to, since we don't know what the end users want, we have to sort of figure out what should be the three or four things that we want to be looking for in order to find an application that maps to those three or four things. And the core of that is finding the secret sauce. Here's a movement from Tai Chi. I used to do Tai Chi, still do it somewhat. It's the first movement. It starts out like this, goes up, goes around, comes back down, settles down. What's the secret sauce there? It's not that the movement comes up slowly and goes around and comes back down. That's just describing what's going on. There's a secret sauce there. The secret sauce actually is picture somebody choking you. They're out there choking you like this. You're coming up, you're breaking apart their arms sliding your hand down them and then pulling them down and off balance because you break the balance when you go like this and then you're bringing them down so you can push them aside, knee them, kick them, whatever, get rid of them. So you're trying to look at how you can accomplish a goal. The secret sauce is related to what the technology lets you accomplish and how it lets you accomplish that in a way that nothing else has let you accomplish it in the past. In this case, it's breaking the chokehold. In the case of a uh, syntactic foam, it may be a better way of making a turbine blade so it's light, lighter and can uh, take uh, higher temperatures and so on and so forth, and thus makes a more fuel efficient, less polluting engine because it can burn hotter, et cetera, et cetera. That's what we're trying to understand when we talk about performance. What's the secret sauce? What's the metrics for the secret sauce? And then what are the, are the key aspects that are related to that secret sauce that make this truly an exciting innovation? Without that, it's hard to proceed because if it's a big yawn at that level, nobody's likely to care about it. When we come back next time, we'll talk about ease of use. Ease of use, you'll remember, has to do with how intuitive the technology is to use. If I use computers, a drop-down menu doesn't phase me. It's pretty easy to use. But if I'm talking about a technology that's just been invented and I don't know who the end user is, how am I going to understand ease of use? It's very difficult and, quite frankly, you really can't do it. So the trick is to use the performance metrics, the performance is to figure out where the applications are, see who the end users are, and then once you identify who those end users are, determine whether your technology is easier to use or not. So you use ease of use as a secondary weeding tool for applications. Now, that said, sometimes there are almost intrinsic notions of what's easier to use or not. Let's take a look at an example. We all know the old story about uh, Icarus flying too close to the sun, or hopefully you've heard this uh, Greek myth. Here's a piece of art. There's some ladies in here, and they are holding on to feathers, and they're flying with these feathers. Now, if all you have to do is hold on to something, that's pretty easy to use. That's not that difficult. A lot easier to use a technology like this than a technology like an airplane where you have to figure out how to uh, fly the airplane as well as how to make the airplane, get aboard, all that kind of stuff. What am I saying? Basically this. Ease of use is related to how we interface with the technology. The more the interface is direct, hand, hold, eye, 
C. I look, there is a button, I push the button, click, there's an idiot light, I, it's either green or red versus a dial that I have to interpret. The more simple and direct the physical interface, the more likely you are to have an easier to use technology. The more mediated, the more complicated the interaction of the end user with the technology, the less easy it is to use in general. But again, it's all context specific. It all depends on who the end user is. When we come back, we'll talk very briefly about price.